Now first these seed plants are marked, demarcated on the upslope side by this tree here. It's the silver cluster leaf and they grow on bands at the top edge of a seed plant. Where these trees stop, you then get this particular grass. This is Erigrostis gummiflua, the gum grass, and the seed plant exists on this grass, the gum grass. And where you find this grass growing, at the base of the line of trees, not this particular tree, but there's a line of these trees that extend now going off in that direction, is where the water starts to come out of the ground at the end of summer. And we've got a place like that just here. Now, as you can see here on the ground, there is no water just yet, but you can see that it's fairly wet. Now that in itself is not remarkable because it has been raining, but have a look here where it's hit the road. You can see that the water has started to come out of the ground here and is now flowing. It doesn't look like it's flowing much until I dig a small hole and I'll show you how quickly it fills up. Have a look at how much water is coming out of this sea plant. Isn't that incredible? And this is the second most important water source in the Sabi Sand Game Reserve, the sea plants. Vitally, vitally important to conserve these wetland areas. It's this that gives the grass the ability to last deep into the dry season. And as I was just telling my friend Brian here, uh, this particular sea plant that extends up in that direction over there is one of the most healthy of the sea plants here at Juma. It's got no interference on it whatsoever. And the last few buffalo that were killed by lions in this particular area at the end of the drought last year were killed on these sea plants. This is where they were coming to find grass and were coming to find uh, the ability to survive these dry seasons. And if that isn't testimony to how important these sea plants are, then I don't know what is. This particular road is actually actually a, a good example of a road that's in a slightly bad place that we should possibly look at moving. You can see here that the road is very wet and the water is moving down the road. Now water is sticky, it's sticky by design, it's actually sticky by magnetism and because of this cohesion that water has, it starts to pull out the water in these sea plants and especially when you've got a high a, 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 a flow that is of a velocity that's higher than what it should be, it can drain a sea plant much quicker than what it needs to be drained. In other words, it'll have an effect on late season water in this particular area. So it's probably a good area that at some, or good thing that at some point we look at closing this road down and moving it either further down the slope to below the sea plant or further up the slope on the other side of the sea plant. But that's just one of those things that comes with effective sort of bush management out here and it's something that we are and Juma is and the Sabi Sands is very good at doing. Now Charles, um, you just asked me a question that I was uh, unable to hear all the details of, so Kirsty, if you wouldn't mind just... So would animals know to come get water from a sea plant is the question from Charles and yes, absolutely. Now. In areas like this, where the water is not lying, uh, uh, where the water is not actually lying on the surface, it's difficult to get water. But the thing that we have out here is elephant. Now, come with me quickly, and I'm going to show you what happens in a sea plant or just adjacent to a sea plant um, that will give animals the ability to get water. So, elephant obviously uproot trees, and they do this for a variety of reasons. Mainly, though, it's for food. So elephant will move along, they will rip out some water, and what that will create is it creates a depression. Water coming out of the sea plant, just as it did when I dug that little hole, fills up, and these pans, these natural pans, are what is created. Now here we have a natural pan, an elephant dug this, used it as a wallow, and now we have a pan that is full of water from that sea plant. And this will hold water for much longer. Uh, well, it should hold water for much longer than what the road will, obviously, because it's deeper. But also because the elephant and the warthog, hippopotamus and rhino come and bath often in these wallows, they line the wallow with clay, which is impermeable. And so because it's impermeable, the water battles to seep back into the ground and lies in these depressions as terrestrial water, as water that lies on top of the ground. And this is what gives the ability 
to animals to follow these seed plants, not only for good grass, but also for good water. And that's what we have right here. Isn't that cool?